The gas is chilled on shore and the liquid is then piped onto the tanker. But these super cold temperatures pose big engineering challenges. You can't just use standard steel pipes to do the job. Moving the ultra-cold liquid around the place, off the ship and around the ship on pipes like these presented a whole new set of problems that could only be resolved by recourse to the engineering might of this and of this and even of this. But no, not actual cutlery, obviously. That'd take hours. No, what it's made of. Stainless steel. A hundred years ago, cutlery was made of other metals, silver, say, or plain steel for everyday tableware. But steel rusts off putting at dinner, and like many materials, it changes completely when you put it in the deep, deep freeze. Subantarctic temperatures are a game changer. Suddenly, strong things that you thought you could rely on, like metal, behave differently when you put them in the deep, deep freeze. It's all about ductile to brittle transition temperatures, which is how the properties of things change with temperature. An example, bread. At room temperature, a slice of bread is bendy, flexible, ductile in the jargon. Take the same piece, freeze it. It's harder, but brittle. Wouldn't it be terrible if steel behaved the same way? It does. Jackie Butterfield, a materials specialist and steel consultant, introduced me to a medieval torture device. This is the sort of equipment that we'd use to test the toughness of a metal. Right, can I help? Absolutely. Oh, good. What are they? First thing you can do is lift this weight up and we'll lock it in position. Right, thank you. OK, I always get the nice jobs. Right, so just swing this back, yeah? Yeah. Right, it's quite a, quite a lot of weight. Just for the record, I'm not being a complete weakling. It is actually quite heavy. About 10 kilograms. So it's a fitness program. It is, right? absolutely. Okay. Right, so that's... The weight is primed. Yeah, so what this is going to do, this weight has potential energy. So that's a measured dose of energy that we can apply to the sample down there. Absolutely. It's the same each time because the weight is the same. Step forward, victim number one. A length of standard steel tube, just like a scaffolding pole. Triggering test, so this is going to return a specific amount of potential energy transferred into kinetic energy that will be absorbed or not by the sample. OK, here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> it's, um... It's not even dented it. Despite the full force of the weight slamming into it, at air temperature, the bog-standard carbon steel remained undamaged, whilst the energy ricocheted through the frame around it. So this sample has survived, then? Absolutely. What are we doing here? Right, what we need to do now is test some of the carbon steel at the cryogenic temperatures with the liquid nitrogen. So this is where we introduce our tricky subantarctic temperatures. Absolutely. Q liquid nitrogen. Minus 195 degrees Celsius. This will give the steel the same kind of thermal shock as the chilled liquid natural gas going into the tanker. Thank you, mysterious man with a large, <laughs> large vat of liquid nitrogen. He just follows me around. I've got to be really careful here. Goggles. Um, just put it in. Yep. So. The liquid nitrogen is going to be removing the heat from the steel. For how long do we have to leave that? Just for about 10 seconds, it should get down to the, uh, to the right temperature. In 10 seconds, yeah. that liquid nitrogen would have removed that much heat energy from the steel? Yes, it That will. quickly? No wonder you have to be careful not to spill it on yourself. <laughs> right, coming through. So, the liquid nitrogen has dramatically lowered the temperature of the steel just as the gas cargo would do as it's piped on board the ship. Right, if we're ready, three, two, one. It's broken, badly. Look at that, it's just shattered. 
So it's exactly the same sample, same metal. This one barely a scratch. This one got ruined. Just shattered. Behaved completely differently. In a brittle manner. Brittle, ductile. ductile. Brittle, ductile. Cold. Clearly then, you wouldn't want to rely on that anywhere really cold. In a liquid gas tanker, for instance. Instead, the tanker engineers needed a material that can withstand super cold temperatures, which brings us back to cutlery of the stainless steel variety. In 1913, British chemist Harry Brearley was looking for a tough metal for gun barrels. He mixed chromium and steel, but it was too soft. However, the reject alloy revealed two unexpected benefits. It didn't rust, which was good for cutlery, and even better for liquid gas tankers. Putting this new stainless steel in the deep freeze doesn't make it brittle. So, loading it in. Ooh, ooh, that's slightly sort of frightening when you do that. Right. Here is frozen sample. Three, two, one. That's completely... It's just shrugged it off. So what's actually happening in it that's so different? Why is this fine and that ruined? Because of the alloying elements in the stainless steel, it's changed the crystal structure, the way the atoms are arranged in the, in the metal. So the difference between these two samples is right down at the atomic level. It is, yes. And that's where its ability to absorb the energy or be ruined by it stems from, right down at that level. Simply adding some chromium can make ordinary brittle steel stand up to cryogenic temperatures. The engineers who built the LNG carriers ensured that not only were the holes fit for the seven seas, but that the thousands of metres of intricate pipework, with all their vulnerable bends, joints and tapes, were made of a material that could take it when the going gets cold. Stay